And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Dire, Wa Dire Wid, Dire Wild. Ah, that, that font keeps throwing me off. I, I, first I called it Dire Wind, it's Dire Wild. Anyway, this is a cooperative deck building dungeon crawler. Okay, that's actually not, I don't think that's completely new. I mean, obviously Thunderstone, well that's not cooperative. But this, I hadn't seen before. It looked like you're making animals and putting animals together and it, it was like a campaign setting. And honestly, I was like, oh, it looks interesting, but there's a lot of these, so I set it to the side for a while. But some people in my game group were like in love with the game. And so they're like, hey, you gotta try this out. So I'm like, all right, let's give this one a whirl. I heard some good things about it. I know it was a Kickstarter. And here's a little bit more. So in this game, players are going to be playing through three different scenarios. It's not a really long campaign, and you could just play through one. You could start on level two or level three. Each one takes about 45 minutes, so take that for what it's worth for length of the game. And as this game goes by, you're going to fight various minions. You'll make a deck, and these minions are going to be all different sorts of minions with a certain number of health and how much damage you need to do to fight or attack them. And they're going to be represented by these figures down here that are going to be matching the different sections up here, the red, the blue, and the green. These minions are basically going to be walking around the board unless they come up next to your characters and or if you decide to attack them, you need to defeat the minions in level one and in level two, and then in level three, you need to defeat the big bad Karn guy who is going to show up. And there might be more than three minions on the board. Again, this is a very basic rules overview. There's gonna be some things I'm not gonna go over. I just wanna kinda of give you a feel of how the game works. Now, the game is a deck builder, so each player is gonna get a deck. So, for example, this uh, is a deck from Alaric here. And so Alaric has one, two, three, four, five kittens, uh, three puppies, and two Ogden penguins. And then I can look at Tog's deck, and Tog has one, two, three, four, four uh, kittens, one, two, three, oh, five kittens, three puppies, and two rock stoats. And everyone has the same deck, except they have two special animals in their deck. Players are also going to get their own player board where you're going to keep track of your attack and you also have some magic. You'll usually get magic from whooping up on enemies and you can spend magic. Each person has like two special abilities that they can spend their magic on and players also have the special abilities that they're able to use overall. There are two characters, uh, two sides for each character, so Tak and Kachar use the same deck. Their actual fine, their special abilities are the same, but the way they use magic will be different. And so everyone's going to have a different way that they're going to plan this. Each turn of the game, players are going to determine their initiative. They're going to be moving around. The bad guys are going to move through a programmable method. Uh, you'll draw some cards, and we'll show how they'll move around the board and so on. And maybe one will be revealed. Maybe multiples will be revealed with their special abilities. Players are going to be drawing five cards from their deck. They're going to be playing these cards. Now, at the beginning, your cards are fairly innocuous, but when you play a card, some of them, this one here, for example, lets you wound yourself. And in this case, it, you're like, why would you wound yourself? Well, Tog gets more powerful when they wound themselves. When you wound yourself, you'll take wounds from this pile down here. They get put in your deck, they're going to clog it up. There's also fatal wounds when you get attacked. There's various things that can cause a fatal wound. The problem is when you run out of fatal wounds, the game is over. Players also, many of the cards they play, they'll be getting charm from it. At the beginning of the game, kittens give you charm for whatever reason. Um, so once you're done with that, you're going to spend charm. So spending charm is going to take place up here. Now here we have a bunch of basic animals you can buy, and they each have a cost of charm there. You can uh, pay charm to destroy them and put more cards out there if you so desire. You can also pay charm to open up the locks here. There's going to be a certain number of locks based on the players in the game, and when all the advanced creature locks are done, then you can start putting out advanced creatures when you buy something, and these are better than your regular creatures, but you don't want to fill too many up here. You can also then, once you unlock the advanced creatures, you can start unlocking these, which give you special things. For example, this one here, you'll use a D6. Normally when you fight someone, you use a three-sided die. That will give you a six-sided die when that one's unlocked. 
So players are going to buy cards and they can stick these cards in their discard pile. When your deck runs out, you will add more cards to that. Why do you want these cards in your pile? Because at the end of your turn, you're going to take the creatures in your hand and form one powerful creature. So here, maybe I want to make a kitten. I'm going to turn the rest of my cards upside down. And this is a feisty, awkward, noble kitten. It has four strength, two extra movement, and a pushback special ability. And if I had a, a dog, a puppy, for example, then I would use the main one here, I would use his attack. So one, so this would be a five attack dog with two movement. You're like, oh, wait a minute, I want to make the, the griffin my main creature. That's fine, but then when you see when I turn the puppy over, it gives an attack. So now I have a fluffy, feisty, awkward, fluffy, furry, vanguard griffin, which is one, two, six attack. And it, can, it has a flying ability here of two. And that's it. I don't have the pushback anymore because the pushback only came when I turned this upside down. So you're going to try to figure and move your cards around. And as you get more creatures, and you can see the different creatures that are here, not only will they give you a special ability when you play them. So I guess when draw a card, move a space, ignore any disengagement penalty. Draw a card, that card's a reptangle. Uh, re reptile gain two, uh, two rage. And so... These cards will give you things. These cards also give you money purchasing power when you use them. Some of them do. Like this, the turtle here gives you one purchasing power when you use it. But they also give you power when you create an animal with the, the different cards. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of different ways that you can combine these to make the creature. That creature then will help you that turn as you go around and fight. And you're going to use your total attack strength plus these. Also, you might have things. Uh, again, remember the, the Tog character you know every time why would you take a wound because when he takes a wound he's able to move up on his berserker track which gives him bonuses to his attack at the beginning of each turn everyone's track always moves one closer to zero so he'll you know things will calm down but you can he can heat himself up to get this attack so he'll take his attack plus the animal he made plus a three-sided or eventually a six-sided die to do damage to these creatures and as they take damage eventually he'll knock the minions out now, Karn will show up at some point. Karn has a whole deck of cards, and he's his own whole beast to fight, like a big, bad, final bad guy. But that is essentially how the game works. You can pause the game in between rounds by just storing all your stuff in here, and then coming back and playing in the next round. And there's you know, a lot more you know, small rules, but that's basically it. You're building a deck of various animals that you are summoning to help fight these minions. And eventually, in, you could beat Karn in the first two scenarios if, if he shows up, but likely you'll beat him in the third scenario, or you'll lose and die. And that's how you play. Everything comes really nice in this box here. I should show you that the, the board here, and the board you've already seen looks great. The miniatures, I'm pretty sure the miniatures don't come in every game. I think this is like a, a Kickstarter upgrade, but as you take a look at the miniatures, I'm glad they have bases for these guys. These guys, uh, they like in a cloak, and it's kind of funny when their card comes out because they don't look like this, and I get that the bad guy, you know, looks sufficiently bad. But I'm pretty happy with the miniature work on these. I'm no expert on miniatures, but these look pretty good. Uh, everything about the game, I think, is, is very nicely put together. There's a slight amateurish look to some of the things, but I do like that these cards have all the information on them that you need. The artwork itself looks good as I look at the different characters that are in the game, and it's very easy to read. I found all that very nice. And then these boxes. These are kind of pretty interesting boxes. They all fit in the game pretty simply, and you have room to put all your stuff in here between campaigns, so I like that a lot. So everything fits nicely in the box. The standees are not as good, I think, as the miniatures, obviously, but they are actually, if you don't unpainted miniatures, these might work better for some people. And then you have just a ton of cards in the game. And again, I think the artwork... Like some of this stuff, I would have preferred to seen some specific artwork on these. But again, it looks fine. It's just that the whole card itself, sometimes, again, it kind of looks like a really, really nice prototype as opposed to a published game. Again, really happy with the art on the, on the game. The art is fantastic. And the graphic design on these cards itself is fine. I have more of a problem with the treasure cards than anything else. So... I'll give this an A- minus on production. I think it's pretty good. Alrighty, so that's Dire Wild. Now, it's a campaign game, and I usually, 
I guess uh, I'll be honest. I'm a little tired of campaign games because they require they you know they require this big investment into them. I'm not so keen on that investment these days, but this one is a very easy investment. You can play a little bit of it, store it, or you can play through the whole thing, and it's not that long, or you can die. But I, you know, it's a deck building game. But what makes this deck building game interesting is that forming of the animals. There's some things about this game that I'm okay on. For example, I'm okay on the enemy AI. I think it's kind of boring how the enemy works, and it's a little... I just wish the AI was a little bit more interesting. Uh, I also think that the design of the game, there's, it feels slightly rough around the edges. You can tell it's like a Kickstarter, like a, maybe a strong developer could have maybe smoothed out some things about the game, make it go faster. And things like deciding who goes first each turn, the enemies attack priority and stuff. I wish there was maybe a better way that they just went around, like players can decide as a whole. And it just, that felt a little uh, slightly clunky there. But the deck building aspect is incredibly fascinating. You know, because you're buying cards that give you special abilities, you're buying cards that give you um, money that you can spend on future cards, and you're, you're buying cards that can turn into an animal. And, and if you focus on one type of animals, let's say you focus on birds, birds let you draw a bunch of cards. If you focus on, on reptiles, they, you know, you can do different things. And then unlocking those special abilities at the top, that's just a really neat concept. Unlocking the advanced ones, you're like, yeah, I will fill the top with advanced. No, you don't want too many of those expensive ones because you might not have the charm to be able to buy them. Oh, the theme is a little weird. Am I like throwing kittens at the other person? I don't know. But you're like making this creature, then they run at it. And the, the adjectives aren't necessary, but it's fun to see the adjectives put together and making this creature, and you're trying to build a cool creature. And that's by far the shining light of this game. There's other things that you didn't, you know, there's treasures you can get. You can run around a board and grab treasures. And um, the bad guys, like I said, are not the most interesting part. You are the most interesting part. And you're working together to fight this thing. I like it. This is like the epitome of what I think Kickstarter should be. Uh, a game that probably a big publisher would have said, I don't know, this was a lot of weird stuff in it. And it is a lot of weird stuff. But it all comes together in a really cool deck building style game. Uh, as I play through, there's a lot of talking back and forth. There's certainly, you know, with cooperative, there's always that possibility if someone's an alpha gamer and they tell everyone else what to do. This game mitigates that a little bit because you just can't watch everything. Uh, you have your own deck of cards. You're building your own deck. You say, I want to buy this card. Let's work together. If you, There's a lot of special abilities that help other players. So you kind of encourage to use your special ability to help other people and then beating down on the, on the bad guys. Yeah, this is, this is like refreshing is a good terminology when I play this game because I've seen a lot of deck builders. I've seen a lot of cooperative games. And this one feels a little bit different than the rest. So definitely want to check out. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a lot of generic fantasy tropes maybe on the cover. But the whole building that custom animal, it almost feels like a video game type feel to it. And it's a campaign game that manages to say, stay campaign, not overstay its welcome. And you can just play a one shot if you want to very easily. I like it. That's Dire Wild. Dice Tower Judgment approved!